Welcome to Honors Geometry 6.1, Ratios and Proportions. This uh, chapter is about uh, similar triangles, the triangles that have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. And because of similar uh, triangles, we're going to have to work with ratios and proportions to solve some ratios so that we can talk about the uh, corresponding sides of similar triangles and we're going to start out with ratios and proportions. Welcome to an algebra or, or maybe even a, uh, a middle school uh, remix today. So here we go. Some ratios can be simplified really easy just by uh, crossing out things. Some ratios need to be altered before they can be simplified. Alright, what do I mean by that? Here, let me show you. All right, simplify the following ratios. All right, you have 3x over 9x. You can cancel out the x's. And then you can simplify the numbers. What goes into 3 that goes into 9? 3 does. So that ratio simplified 1 over 3. 4 inches over 2 inches. The inches can cancel out. 4 over 2. We're going to leave it as a ratio, 2 over 1. Okay, 12 ounces to 1 pound. Well, you could change them both to pounds or you could change them both to ounces. I think it's easier to change this to ounces. 1 pound, 16 ounces. That's why professional boxers wear 16 ounce gloves, so they can pound their opponents. I don't know if that's where it really came from, but it makes a lot of sense. Now that I changed the pounds to ounces, I can cancel out the ounces and then reduce 12 sixteenths to 3 quarters. And then 3 feet to 6 inches, I think it's easier to change the feet to inches. So how many feet, sorry, how many inches are in a foot? 12, so that would be 36 inches. Cancel out the inches. And the ratio 6 to 1. So sometimes in order for us to simplify ratios, we have to change the units so that the units are the same. Now, for conversions, you may need to consult page 921 in your book because it has all the conversions, like gallons to fluid ounces and things like that, or miles to uh, feet, or centimeters to meters, all those things. Those will be on page 91, 921. But I'd just like to show you a cool thing that my wife came up with for her fifth grade class as far as volume. You got one big gallon. In that gallon there are four quarts. In each quart there are two pints. And then in each pint, there are two cups, and each cup is six ounces. Sorry, each cup is eight ounces, not six ounces. So it's just a nice little uh, graphic way, uh, mnemonic device to help you remember volume with the standard units. All right, let's move on. All right, word problems with extended ratios. Okay, when you see a ratio of like seven to two, I want your brain to think. 7x to 2x. All right, and that will get you on the road to 7x plus 2x, complementary 90. 9x equals 90. x equals 10. Both angles 70 degrees, and 20 degrees are the measures of the two angles. Okay, extended ratio of 2 to 3 to 5, I want you in your brain to think 2x to 3x to 5x. So, 3 angles or triangle, 2x plus 3x plus 5x equals 180, because that's the sum of the 3 angles or triangles. CLT, 10x equals 180 x equals 18. So that makes the three angles of the triangle 36 degrees, 54 degrees, and 90 
degree is those are the three angles of a triangle. So when you see an extended ratio, you should be thinking 2x to 3x to 5x. Oh, by the way, what are the three ways to write a ratio? I totally forgot to even talk about this earlier. The first way you can write it is as a fraction, 5 over 2. After all, the word fraction contains the word ratio, R, A, T, I, O. The other way you can write ratio is with words, 5 to 2. And the third way is to write with a colon, 5 to 2. Those are the three ways to write a ratio. Sorry I didn't introduce that earlier. I guess I was just assuming that you knew that. All right, let's go on to solving proportions. In the centuries that I've been teaching, I have come up with three ways that I, that I make sense to me are to solve proportions. The first way is the cross products. Bottom right to top left. Multiply those together. Bottom left times top right. 297. And then divide both sides by 33 to get 9. That's one way. The other way that I've learned is the fishy method. Start on the ratio that is, is associated with the x right here, that number. And what you want to do is you want to start that at 11, go cross diagonally and multiply, turn the corner, and when you turn the corner, you divide. So what you're really doing is 11 times 24 divided by 33 on the calculator and then you get x equals plain old 8. And then there's the third method which I call the smart cookie method. And this is for smart cookies who hate to use a calculator at all. You just see that 11 times 4 is 44 to get a common denominator. So you ask yourself in your brain, brain, what do you have to multiply by 4 to get 28? And you just say, well, yeah, x equals 7. And that's what I call the smart cookie method. And really, it doesn't matter to me which one of those three methods that you do, as long as you get the answer correct. Alrighty. So, what happens when you can't use the uh, smart cookie method or anything like that? Well, you just might have to cross multiply. 144 equals 9x plus 45. Subtract 45 from both sides. Don't forget when you're cross multiplying here the distributive property. It's 9x plus, not 9x plus 5, 9x plus 45. 11 equals 9. Sorry, 11, 11 equals x. All right, now, sometimes smart cookies will say, you know what, I can reduce that uh, 6 ninths to 2 thirds, and 3 goes into 21 7 times, 2 times 7, 14 equals x. That's another way that you could do that. And again, that's kind of shortcutting if you want to just take 21 multiply by 6 divide by 9 and get 14 that's fine and dandy with me just trying to save you paperwork save you uh, time because I know that with my multiplication tables that I can do it quicker than it takes for me to punch it out on a calculator hey choose your poison doesn't matter to me this will conclude lesson 6.1 honors geometry ratios and proportions